Hello, this is the Captain Paxo. Welcoming you back to some Dark Souls. As you can see, we got our Silver Knight straight sword. And wouldn't you know it, it was the very first Silver Knight I killed after I stopped recording. Good times. But now we got our weapon of choice. All we need to do now is uh, upgrade it. Because at the moment, the longsword is stronger than the silver knight. But not for much longer. Make it the quick shortcut. Down here. Fail the parry. <laughs> Get the parry. And as you can see, we're doing pretty good damage already. Oh. No. Ah. <laughs> I'm flailing at the moment. <sighs> More luck than judgment. More luck than judgment. Hopefully the audio will be uh, pretty good this time, because I'm recording with Audacity, which basically means better audio quality. Not not shit, kind of staticky, really quiet sort of stuff. You know, so hopefully this is going to go well. Oh, there you are. You've been quiet these days. You summoning out there? Anytime you see my brilliant design on the signature, you... nah. We don't need your help. No offense. Just don't need it. Yeah. Not quite enough to one shot them. I generally. At this point in the game, oh, if my weapon is good enough to one-shot the Silver Knights with a riposte, uh, I generally think that, like, yeah, we've got good damage for this stage in the game. And obviously right now we don't one-shot them, so we're not doing quite good enough damage for this stage in the game. But that can change very quickly. How many Twinkling do we have? We have four. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, let's just skip the sentinels. Can't be bothered with them. Up to the Chloranthi Tower. Is it the Chloranthi symbol? Maybe. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Maybe all the lore in this game was just one big coincidence and somehow it just all made sense. Except for the people who spent about 30 seconds looking at the law. Don't have enough for twinkling. Giants. No! Not enough souls. Just kill some demons. Oof. I don't like the hitboxes on these guys. They're way too, uh... Floaty! <laughs> or maybe that's just how the the AI works. They can be very annoying to hit with certain weapons. Hmm, can we knock this guy off? Probably not fast enough. Oh no, we are! Good thing is though, they've got no poise. Free chunk. And enough souls to upgrade our weapon once more, and I can't remember how much these are. Let's use one of these. That's 800. That's not quite enough. Wait, is it? God damn it. <laughs> Had to be two souls off. Just remembered you can't sell items in this game, not unless you talk to Frampt. I was gonna sell him two pieces of boop. 
<laughs> to get the two cells that I needed. There we go. Out of Twinkling, out of Souls, Silver Knight Straight Sword plus three. And now we have uh, an attack rating of 280. That's a lot lower than I expected it to be. Hmm. Where's the long sword? Long sword plus 10. Ah, long sword does less damage, so I'm happy. <laughs> or rather, I do more damage with the Silver Knight straight. Let's put on the Charcoal Pine Risen. Let's actually use it this time. Yeah, I've got nothing to lose. Let's fight some more in Ironstein. Missed. Missed. Excuse me. Oop. All right. Fat boy and slim. Let's go. I'm a lot better at taking on super orins, so I'm going to try and take out Smo first. I said I was going to try and take out Smo first. <laughs> ah, yeah. Look at that damage! <laughs> Owie. Missed. Fuck, 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 fuck! <laughs> Come on. No! Oh! <laughs> I got this now. Don't super slam. Oh my. Uh oh. Don't want any of that. Get out of here. Dodge into his legs. Because this is all you do with super orange, is you just dodge into him. Nope. Nope. Don't want to get hit by a lingering hitbox. We got this. I got this. We got this. You got this. I'm out of fire. Damn it, I need more fire. Nope. Got more fire. Mm -hmm. Gotcha! That was exciting. <laughs> oh, how much health did we have? 26. Sweet. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe it. I've been closer to death, but in much safer situations. <laughs> that went really, really bad really, really quickly. But hey, still managed to capitalize on it. Ooh, it's been a long time since uh, Smoren Orenstein gave me uh, 
that much of an exciting fight. Actually, I'm going to save these souls. I'm going to save these souls to buy some more twinkling. Because I'd like to have a uh, plus five silver knight straight before. Um, hello. Before I leave Anor Londo. Exposition. I love it. I love the lore of Dark Souls, but it's the same with any cutscene in any video game. Once you've seen it a hundred times, it kind of loses its pizzazz. And that might be because uh, the game is just that much easier, because you've just played it that much more, you're that much more experienced, and so seeing that cutscene is so much less rewarding. I don't know. Woo! Haha, <laughs> you fell down. How many do I need and how many can I afford? These are questions that I can't be bothered to work out. I'll just let the game tell me. <laughs> you can still hear the Silver Knight trying to shoot me through a wall. How many do I need? I need... Well, I need two for that. Do I need three for the next one? Ah, let's just buy two. So that's 16,000. Another 2,000. Four for the next one. Good God. Can I buy four? Oh, I can buy four exactly. And now I don't have enough to upgrade my weapon. But that's fine. We've got plenty of souls. This is why we pick up all the souls that we can find. So that if we ever need to, we can just pop them and... Hey... We're fine. We've got plenty of souls. It's just a time saver. That's all it is. An item of convenience. And it is very convenient to have a plus five Silver Knight straight sword at this point in the game. Three, three, three. Solid. Did I mention the fact that this weapon is one of the very few weapons in Dark Souls? The upgrades with Twinkling Titanite, but can be buffed. How many other weapons do that? Like, the Silver Knight Spear doesn't do that. A Store of Straight Sword doesn't do that. And I'm out of weapons that upgrade with Twinkling Titanite that I can remember. <laughs> Black Knight weapons, they upgrade with Twinkling, don't they? Yeah, they do. Or is it demon? No, it's twinkling. Demon is boss weapons. Yeah. Can't upgrade that. Anyway. Let's go through and take out the residents. Dag nabbed. I can I so rarely get a perfect parry on that attack. That backhanded swing. I don't know what it is about it, I just can't do it. Every other attack the Silver Knight um, has, I can parry perfectly. Just like that. But the backhand, I just... I don't know. My timing just is not quite there. Oh, I forgot you exist. But it's okay. <laughs> we do enough damage now to one-shot them with a repost. What is it? Oh yeah! I can do wield them now! <laughs> oh my god. Should I actually? Should I dual wield Silver Knight Stray Swords? How dumb of an idea is that? Uh, especially considering how bad dual wield is in this game. Which is something I can't believe they didn't keep in Dark Souls 3. Like, instead of maintaining the badass dual wield mechanic from Dark Souls 2, they decided to create a very few specific weapons that have a dual wield ability. They merged the dual wield from Dark Souls 2 and the trick weapons from Dark Souls, not Dark Souls, Bloodborne, 
and it it just kind of ruined what we had in Dark Souls 2 because what we had in Dark Souls 2 was so cool it allowed for so much creative freedom even if you couldn't dual wield um, every weapon in the power stance you could at least dual wield two weapons and be able to perform both of their movesets perfectly with no compromise like there is in Dark Souls 1 or three, because you know, like with the Silver Knight Straight Sword, you just saw me block when it was uh, in my other hand. Um, but in Dark Souls 2, it's like, oh no, you can totally just do that, you know. You can totally use the light attack and the heavy attack, whatever, man, just whatever floats your boat. Have a, a, a straight sword and a, I don't know, great club. Have a, a dagger and a spear. Why not? Get creative. Just allows for so many interesting builds to arise from it and they just went nah we're just gonna turn those dual wield weapons into singular weapons that have specific stats so you have to tailor your build i mean that's not too bad to tailor your build around a certain weapon but when you're tailoring your build around a certain dual wield combo it suddenly becomes a lot more interesting because you've got to put a few points in this a few points in that and it's not just for one weapon it's for two weapons I don't know, it feels like the investment is a lot more significant even though it necessar isn't necessarily, if you get my, what I mean. Anyway, ramblings aside, <laughs> I'm still not a fan of Dark Souls 3, <laughs> in case you couldn't tell. I don't even know why I'm over here. Havel stuff? Sure, let's pick up Havel stuff, why not? Become the rock. Alright. What is this? Great shield? Nope. <laughs> great shield's over there somewhere. Is this great shield? What should be the club? Oh, no, it's great shield. I was right the second time. And a cult club. Which I might use. Maybe. Probably not. Just thinking, what would I use for the catacombs? Uh, what I normally do for the catacombs, well, I say normally, but the catacombs has one of my uh, favorite weapons in it. Is it the cat? Do you get it in the catacomb? You can get it off patches by either killing him or making him an NPC and then just buying it off him. It's the Crescent Axe. I really like the Crescent Axe. It's a... God damn, I hate that move. Because there's two variations to the swing speed. Or it feels like at least. The Crescent Axe. It's the axe... Well, it's the Battle Axe with the longest range. And that's pretty much all that makes it special. It's really interesting, though. Just because it has so much range. And then they turned it into a halberd in Dark Souls. Did they do it in Dark Souls? I know it is in Dark Souls 3, but I'm not sure if they did it in Dark Souls 2. But yeah, really long range battle axe. So it has the battle axe properties of like staggering um, if you miss or whatever. Which I'm perfectly fine with. For that much range. Scales well with faith. It's... Scaling stats are... Where are we going? Let's go to the catacombs. Um, its scaling stats aren't phenomenal. I think it's like... C in all stats. C in strength, C in dex, and... C no. B in faith. C in all stats, B in faith. So, not great scaling. But it does decent enough damage when you... Uh, level it up enough, you know. That's another weapon that scales, or um, you upgrade with Twinkling. Does uh, split physical and magic pretty evenly split, so it's not the best uh, for resistance wise. Um, but against certain bosses, it does does do a lot of damage. Get out of here, measly soul. Uh, don't Zweihander, Wingspear. 
binoculars. Nah. Not really interested. Another item in the catacombs that I uh, quite like is the uh, Sanctus. I really like the Sanctus. I don't know if I, I properly mentioned the regeneration build that I like to sort of do. Ooh, that was close. Um, using Sanctus and replenishment and something like a server or a uh, butcher's knife. Um, get out of here. Ass hat. I hate that move. They just chase you down and t that move comes out really quickly. Try it again. Dickhead. What was I talking about? They're roly poly nonsense. Get out. They just chase you down, they don't stop. Alright. Maybe I should compile a list of my favourite weapons. Eh. Yeah, screw doing top tens. I mean, they can be entertaining to watch. Get out of here. They can be somewhat entertaining to watch, depending on the subject matter. Um, but a lot of them are just really clickbaity and kind of nonsensical. Not very well put together. Uh, and have very arbitrary criteria. Alright. I mean, like that top 10 um, most unfairest bosses or whatever it's called in gaming. It's like, ha ha, Capra Demon. Ha ha, you're an idiot. What are you talking about? This is the moment where I realized if I wanted to get Sanctus, um, I needed to summon Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> um, and I've just missed him so this is the big question do I want Sanctus do I not want Sanctus oh I really like Sanctus how much faith do I have I need to put 10 levels into faith to be able to use Sanctus what was that rumbling Ten points into faith just to be able to use Sanctus. Oh, <laughs> look at him! He's not giving up. This is what I mean. Oh wow, he actually stopped. Uh, fuck it. Let's get Sanctus. <laughs> Why not, right? And this is where I find out that I've actually already killed. Um, could you call it? Let's change the order of these. Get them a little bit above, just so they're not in the way. Uh, let's change this. Move that down to the bottom. No, I didn't want to change order. I wanted to use it. Oh, I need to kindle first, don't I? No, I don't. Just reverse hollowing. What am I talking about? You need to reverse hollowing in order to be able to kindle. You don't kindle to reverse hollowing. That doesn't make any sense. Alright. Onwards and downwards. Actually, speaking of top 10 videos, um, there are a lot of channels that do like commentary style. Oh, shit. Well, there goes my humanity. Oh, well. Um, there's a lot of channels that do, like, commentary-style videos or critique videos on other videos on YouTube, which sounds meta in of itself. Um, but there's, there's all sorts of critique videos for all sorts of other videos on the internet. And because I've been getting back into Pokemon recently because I'm a man-child... Um, I've been watching Pokemon videos on 
uh, YouTube, a lot of them are very bad. Like, really not great. And there's a fair number of um, commentary channels that do commentaries on these videos, basically critiquing them and pointing out where they're stupid and just wrong. That was unfortunate. <clears throat> but then, recently, I came across a video that was critiquing a commentary video that was critiquing another video, and I just thought to myself, like, man, the Pokemon community, if you're part of the Pokemon YouTube community, like, just get out as quickly as you can, because that community just tears each other apart. Like, no remorse. They're at each other's throats. I mean, it is a pretty notoriously toxic community. Well, I say notoriously, but it's it's meant to be a pretty surprisingly toxic community. Um, and you can see just by uh, a lot of the videos on YouTube. Like I said, there's a video critiquing a video that the video is critiquing another video. And it's just sort of like, how far down the rabbit hole are we willing to go here? Like, is there going to be a commentary on your video, which is a commentary on a commentary on a commentary on Pokemon like really how far are we prepared to go and you just sort of realize that like doesn't matter how good of a video you make on YouTube it's it can and probably will get critiqued very harshly and sometimes unfairly like there's some unjust criticism but there's also plenty of valid criticism but the part that really sticks out to me is there's a lot of criticism that I feel like they do just to just for the sake of like making it into a video like I need to make a video of Chris uh, criticizing this person I need to come up with like a million things are oh, great worst mask um, just it just seems so strange to me you know because, like I said, the Pokemon community is surprisingly not that positive. So I feel like, shouldn't people be trying to, like, come together to make the best quality videos as opposed to just shitting on each other? You know? That's, that's always been my philosophy on YouTube. Like, with my Dark Souls PvP videos, which is essentially what this channel was born on and what most people know me for, I did those videos because nobody else was doing those Dark Souls PvP videos in that style. And that's what I wanted to see. I wanted to watch like Seraphim 17 and Martyrs Brigade, but they weren't really doing um, Dark Souls 3 PvP videos for their own reasons. Um, so I decided, fuck it, I'm gonna do it myself. You know? Make the content that you want to see on YouTube. And that's kind of. Recently, I've been in a bit of a, a lull uh, when it comes to making videos. Like, I've, I just sort of felt like, I don't know, it's hard to explain, down about it. A bit like, well, it's, ooh, hello. <laughs> a bit, like with the commentary videos, it's like, well, everything can get critiqued and torn apart for not really any particularly good reason other than I disagree with you so I can now make a video bitching about it which again criticism is perfectly valid but there there's a time and a place where I kind of think like is it really necessary do we really need this much criticism uh let's go for it I don't know it just got me a bit um disheartened about YouTube and a lot of people who watch YouTube they're just perfectly content there's a lot of people on YouTube who watch um, a lot of YouTubers certain YouTubers and they just let themselves get manipulated by them and it makes me really sad because I'm kind of one of those people I'm one of those people who watches a video and doesn't see anything wrong with it and I hate myself for it you know? Stop it. Uh, 
Uh. Uh. Oh, you have poise, my friend. But not that much poise. But yeah, I'm I'm one of those people who will watch a video and not see anything wrong with it, and then someone else will watch the same video and be like, "Well, what the, what happened? How could you? What on planet are you drunk?" And I'll be like, uh, "Yes, I don't know, maybe." And even um, critique videos, like you'll watch a critique video and you'll. You'll hear all the criticism that they make, and you'll be like, oh, yeah, those, those are all fair criticism. But you'll forget to critique the critic, you know? Like, who watches the Watchmen kind of thing. And it just gets... It all got a bit daunting, and I was like, I... I don't know. I don't know if I really want to keep going on with this. Which turns out I do. Hence, video. Now, there's definitely a market to be made in um, slandering other people. Because that's what YouTube has turned into now. It's just causing drama, causing shit, calling people out on X, Y, Z, labeling it as criticism and being like, well, it's criticism, so it's perfectly fair and everything's subject to criticism, which is true, like I said. But sometimes it does go too far. And I'm wandering around in circles, like I just did! Ha ha! Topical. I'm very good at... Uh, yes. I'm very good at running a train of thought that goes round in circles. It's kind of a theme with me when I do things off script. Ooh, leave me alone. <clears throat> right. No! We pretty much have one shot at this, because I think if you muck up um, killing an invader in Dark Souls 1, uh, they won't respawn. So you pretty much get one shot, and, and I'm not that confident at fighting Leroy, because his weapon hurts. Oh-ho! And I haven't even placed the Lord Vessel. Aren't I special? Does he still spawn? Oh, shit. Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I was just getting flashbacks. No, he doesn't spawn. I'm getting flashbacks of um, coming down to uh, Tomb of the Giants without the Lord Vessel. Oh, my God. It was hell trying to get out. <laughs> it was absolute hell. I'm not doing that again. I'm never doing that again. Um... Well, in that case, let's go to New Londo. New Londo. Let's try and get good old Kath. I need 20,000 souls to get the Covenant of Artorias. We can probably get 20,000 souls, right? We could kill... Um, ceaseless Discharge. That should give us quite a few. But yeah. Um, yeah, let's just do Anna Londo. Open up the shortcuts. <clears throat> give us access to farming Titanite chunks, which ha -ha, I don't need. <laughs> That's one of the advantages of having a... Um, uh, what's it called? Weapon that upgrades with twinkling. Is you don't need chunks to max it out. You don't need a slab. You just need souls to buy the twinkling. You have an infinite supply of them. And I'm going to need to get some more faith. That's going to be fun. No hugs for you.
Alright. And I just realized that I've probably been playing for quite some time. <laughs> yes, I've made the mistake of forgetting to uh, timestamp. Once again. Professionalism. Oh, well. I'll open up the next shortcut and then we'll call it a day. But yeah, in, in the sort of like uh, commenta commentary criticism community, especially in the Pokemon community, it just seems like the solution is to band together and make really high quality videos. Just make the highest quality goddamn videos you can make without turning on each other and slandering each other, calling each other idiots and retarded and all other synonyms for stupid. <clears throat> you know, slandering them, saying that they said certain things when they didn't, taking things out of context and just generally being quite miserable to each other. But what do I know? I'm I'm just a I'm just a nobody on YouTube. I don't have a voice. I mean, I do have a voice. It's just a very quiet voice. In terms of subscriber base, I have a very loud voice. Well, mouthy, I would say. Otherwise, I wouldn't be mouthing off right now. But loud, no. Oh, it's so nice to not have to worry about frame rate here. Because, <laughs> uh... Coming up this ladder one time on Xbox. Game froze for like five seconds before it went back to stop motion. And I mean bad stop motion, like three frames a second. Really bad. It took it about 10 seconds before it smoothed back out to about 25 frames per second. These guys gonna bother me? Yeah, they are. Get out. Get out. But anyway, we've opened up the first shortcut, and we're making our way into, uh, what's his name? Ingwood? Ingwood's house? Next time, opening up, or de-flooding, you Londo, because we do have the Lord Vessel. I mean, even if we didn't, I could just kill him. Not a big deal. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll give a beckon, and I'll catch you next time.